Is that kind of a bad smell in here? Yeah. That disconcerting. Coming up in this episode, smoke in the cockpit. Pan, 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 pan. Golf November whiskey, Foxtrot, Sierra. We've got kind of a burning smell inside, and the engine did surge. A flying reporter special report. Oh god! Open the window! Open the window! Open the window! A young pilot faces a real emergency just weeks after getting his flying license. The, the worst moment was that first breath of that smoky air. Seventeen-year-old Zach Kaplowitz is taking his dad flying for the first time since getting his license. He passed his test less than two months ago, and they're sightseeing in a Cessna 172 over Essex in England. This is Chelmsford here, up, in, up ahead of us. Uh, here, I'll lower the nose a bit so you can see. Yeah. Twenty minutes after taking off from North Weald, they notice a strange smell. Just don't usually get smells from the ground up here. So. Yeah. What happened next was to test Zach's training. In this video, we'll watch the incident play through and then debrief with Zach and the air traffic controller who helped him get back on the ground safely. I bet that sigh of relief as well when he touched down, just the exhale must have been memorable, just the relief. So at the first sign of trouble, Zach and his dad were flying east, approximately 16 miles northeast of South End Aerodrome. Oh, that smells burning, yeah. Oh God, open the window, open the window, open the window. We're OK, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to land at South End, OK? I'm not, I'm not too worried. The engine's running. Pan, 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 pan. Golf November Whiskey Foxtrot Sierra. We've got kind of a burning smell inside, and the engine did surge. Uh, just for a moment, could we get a straight in approach on whatever runway you're using at South End, please? Golf Foxtrot Sierra, the smoke's coming from the uh, electric panel. We're shutting that down. Well, I'm joined now by Zach, who was the pilot of that Cessna. And Zach, um, we happened to be talking about this um, the day that this happened, and you were pretty shaken up, and I'm not surprised. In the moment, it was, it was just very surreal. I didn't feel very much. I just knew what I needed to do. Uh, but then after, once we landed, I mean, I, I got out of the, the plane once we shut down at South End, and my hands were just just shaking. You can see from the video um, either a jump of adrenaline or fear. Yeah. Wh which was it? Was it both? I don't know. It, it felt like all of my senses just, just jumped, like you said. Um, and like I mentioned, I did tell Southend that the engine surged and that, that didn't happen. It was, it was me that surged, um, which is a, <laughs> an interesting thing that happened yeah you've been able to download the video now so shall we watch it together and uh just have a talk through perhaps you can talk through as we're watching it so at this point i don't think we had realized anything was wrong we might have noticed a very faint smell but until it got stronger i don't think either of us even kind of contemplated the possibility of anything being seriously wrong is that kind of a bad smell in here yeah it is that disconcerting the eggy smell yeah so what were you smelling zach it was it was just that it was an eggy smell i've i've smelt that a very similar smell to that before um on the ground just in kind of volcanic areas often kind of a sulfur sulfur, sulfur yeah. eggy smell yeah um so at that point i could have been thinking you know what could be wrong because John, you know, we don't get smells in the air at 3,000 feet coming from uh, the ground. Sometimes you do from chimneys and things and fires. Yeah, well, I, it's, it's rare. I haven't really had that before. Uh, and I think a smell of this strength, I should have kind of discounted that possibility. But as you'll see in a minute, my brain very much wants to accept a kind of positive, well, mm -hmm. a, a neutral uh, explanation. Mm -hmm. So that's a really interesting kind of human performance thing that I didn't at this point consider, okay, where could that smell be coming from? I couldn't imagine a smell like that coming from this plane. That that's, seems organic. Yeah. 
Well, as long as you're feeling fine, I'm not worried. I'm, I'm good. There aren't really any gases that an engine would make that smell anything like that, so... I wasn't thinking I broad enough there. Look at that. The cloud on the left there, get a photo of that. So you can see at this point, we're still very, if you want to pause, at this point we're still very relaxed, taking photos, continuing on the route. I had made no changes to, uh, to our planned route or anything like that, still taking photos. We were still very, just continuing on with a slightly unpleasant smell. So I hadn't, still hadn't even considered that something might be wrong. Oh, that smells burning, yeah. Oh God, open the window, open the window, open the window. Oh, that smells burning. So was it you or was it your dad that met or both at the same time you noticed? It was that? the exact same time. It was a very sharp change from the sulfur smell to a very clear burning smell. And you can see before anything, I'm already banked left. I know I don't want to go right because that's going to take me out over the water. So even before I've made kind of a conscious decision where I'm going, I'm already kind of doing it. Whether that's good or not is a, an interesting question, but it is, it's, it's very interesting that I'm already turning. Um, Are you now thinking there is something wrong with the aeroplane? Definitely, yeah. Th at this point, there was no question there was a problem. I hadn't quite yet started troubleshooting. I was focused on that. So the first breath, when if you, if you go back, I don't know, three, four seconds, and you watch my arm on the throttle, you can see me kind of jump when I take that first breath with the kind of smoky burning smell. Because? It just felt like that breath wasn't, it's really hard to explain, it felt like that breath wasn't working. Oh, that smells burning, yeah. Oh God, open the window, open the window, open the window. Okay. What's up? Uh, there's a problem. Jesus Christ. Uh, just keep the window open. We're okay, don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna land at South Africa. Okay? Yeah, that is really scary. Just keep that window open, okay? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not too worried. The engine's running and... Oh, I'm happy. Okay. I'm not too worried. The engine's running. Oh, I'm happy. Um, not the kind of things you associate with a, a smoke in the cockpit that you have to vent. So at, at that point, I knew that the engine, I, I somehow knew the engine is going to keep running and I was right, but I hadn't used any kind of thoughts to come to that conclusion. So from knowing it's not the engine, obviously it's the electrical system, but it still took about a minute until I actually saw smoke to shut electrics down, which is really interesting because mm. I had, I had, I, I knew it was the electrics without uh, without actually clearly forming that thought. I am going to tell them we've got a problem now. I, like, as soon as the kind of smoke smell came on, I had like a surge, like my breathing just wasn't working right. We're so, good now. So I just said the word, so I just said the word surge there, and I wonder if that kind of primed my brain for what I was about to say to south end it's it's not a big deal it didn't affect the outcome of things in any way but it is it is interesting that i told them something that was not didn't didn't happen pan, 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 pan. Golf, November, whiskey foxtrot sierra we've got kind of a burning smell inside and the engine did surge uh, just for a moment could we get a straight in approach or whatever runway you're using at south end please Golf, whiskey, foxtrot, sierra, panic, knowledge. make a straight in approach runway two three b f r good h one zero zero four Straight in approach runway 23 in BFR, unit 1004, Golf Fox Rock CR. Golf Fox Rock CR, PMB. 2 Golf Fox Rock CR. You can hear on the alternator, the electrics struggling. I don't know if you can hear yeah. that whine. Yeah, um, yeah the, so that's, that's usually present quite quiet at a frequency that's kind of consistent with the engine power. But here you can, I think that's normal for a lot of old. Uh, yeah, it's just we hadn't heard we hadn't heard it until then. So uh, it's, it's definitely getting, getting louder, and the kind of pitch of it is changing mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, the the worst moment was that first breath of that smoky air. So what happens in a minute um, on the right? If you look kind of behind the transponder, sorry, yeah, on the right. If you look kind of behind the 
so if you see the carbon monoxide thing, if you look below that, yeah, that's where the smoke starts coming from. And it's it's the typical kind of electrical fire smoke. It's kind of light, uh, it's white, kind of puffy, uh, smell awful. But I don't think the situation inside got worse once the smoke started. It's just kind of what prompted me to realize, okay, electrical system needs to go off now. Oh my God. I was hoping not to have to deal with anything like this right soon. What's that? I was... Yeah, oh, okay, electrical. Go fuck the air shutting down electrical system. Go fuck that, yeah, the smoke's coming from the uh, electric channel, we're shutting that down. So if you look on the right now, you can see... very tentative thumbs up yeah so i, I don't know if, if uh, i could see that there i can see the smoke coming out and and you can see a change in your demeanor as well mm -hmm. at that point um i mean that looked like fear to me and i think i would feel the same way yeah it was it was that was your scary. dad because we can't see your dad's face i think i was keeping him fairly reassured he I think he felt that I had it under control, but he was definitely scared. Mm. It, it's a scary thing to see smoke coming out, definitely. So you you diverted to um, South End, and we'll come and we'll come and have a look at that in a minute and talk about that. Um, the smoke dissipated, I think, is that right? Once the electrics had gone off. Yes. Yeah. The smoke. The smell, though, the smell lingered for hours. Awful. Yeah. So let's bring in at this point Henry Spurgeon, who um, is an air traffic controller, friend of the channel, air traffic controller at South End. And actually, you were in the tower on the day this happened, I think, weren't you? And you were training uh, a, 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 a controller that was under training. Yeah, that's right. Um, myself and uh, my colleagues on duty that day that were here for this particular incident. Um, so yeah, I was in in aerodrome at the stage. So the stage of the video where um, Zach's actually closer to South End and in the vicinity of the airfield is is perhaps my part but my colleague Dax was was the radar control at the time that took the initial pan call. I know Dax can't be with us today um, and Dax will be familiar to anyone that speaks on the South End radar because we hear him and you a lot on that frequency. Out of interest um, you know what's what's happening or what it tends to happen if this happens because Zach is about uh, six miles west of Clacton. Um, he's northeast of South End's aerodrome, outside of your zone, I think, there. Um, what, what's, what, what's going to be going on? Um, so, yeah, from the, the ATC perspective, it, it's just it's when that pilot makes their first that, that, that declaration of an emergency on frequency or but through a, a pan call or even a mayday. And that's kind of where we will then react and, and appropriately respond and give it the priority that's needed. Um, as we've heard in the audio there, the video that Dax gave him his clearance and as Zach um, appropriately requested, you know, the runway news at South End and sort of direct join. So we just do our best to prioritize an emergency aircraft in a scenario like that to make them the priority. So you're giving him a clearance a long way out there. Um, what, what's, what are you doing to make that safe? for him, that, that, that priority aircraft, what are you doing? I think at that initial stage, you just want to assist the pilot and take that workload away from them. So give them a clearance, give them something to, to hold on to, but something to enter controlled airspace route towards South End. And that's the first job, jobs and their workload is then off the pilot from an RT perspective and airspace and let the, the, let the pilot concentrate on flying. We've acknowledged the call. We'll get on with our procedures in the background, but um, assist the pilot by trying to reduce his workload. So how did it affect other traffic? So I think you mentioned that you landed all of your circuit traffic. Yeah, so um, generally in, in this scenario, as we've sort of said, you become the priority as you're the emergency aircraft now. So our, so our focus is with you and supporting you in any way, shape or form that we can. Um, all other aircraft are, are second to you. So um, if we had an aircraft ahead of you on final approach or something like that, considerations for breaking them off um, and, and getting you in as number one. Um, yes, in aerodrome, if we had aircraft in the circuit, 
we could land those circuit aircraft and tell them to, to get off the runway and go back to the club or hold them on the ground or even possibly to leave the circuit pattern and go out somewhere. Um, a lot of the training aircraft and circuits are often people like yourselves, PPL or people um, flying training as part of a lesson so they can go off and do general handling elsewhere. But um, yeah, it's just making the, the airspace and the runway available for the priority traffic. Obviously, uh, Zach's electrics there were playing up and, and he did transmit a, a, another call to say he was shutting down, which wasn't acknowledged. Um, obviously, you're still working through the detail of, 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 the, of the, the incident. I know you don't want to talk in massive detail about it, but in this case, he's been given clearance to land. He's trying to communicate his intentions. He's shutting down electrics, which does degrade what information you have about him and his position, does it? Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, so in an occurrence like that with an aircraft, with an electrical failure and switching off the electrical systems, we know that we're going to lose, um, firstly, uh, the transponder information that we, we receive. So our radar display will change on that particular aircraft's contact and they become just simply a primary only. So just that physical piece of metal in the air that the radar is still picking up. So we'll still be aware of Zach's position and his track, but we lose the enhanced information that we'd normally receive from transponder aircraft, such as level um, and call sign. So, but we already had that sort of information and we kind of knew who Zach was and where he was and what he was doing. So it's fairly easy to follow. And of course the other, the main thing you lose in electrical shutdown is the two-way communication. So we're essentially treating that aircraft as, as now radio failure and um, and being um, accordingly, you know, with the procedure for an aircraft non-radio. So again, another reason why my colleague was quite quick there to give a opening gambit clearance to get him into the airspace and get him towards the runway, because you've then got that clearance in your back pocket to continue inbound with. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I don't know if Zach, you agree with this, that um, you were given that clearance right away. And you're saying, Henry, that that was, that was, that was designed because Dax is thinking fire, smoke in the cockpit, we might lose comms. Is that, is that pretty much what they're thinking? Yeah, I, th I think so. Again, with the the content of the initial message from from Zach to um, to the radar controller was that yes, it's a an electrical issue, smoke in the cockpit. And again, funnily enough, in this scenario, Dax and myself are both PPL pilots as well. So that side of things does enhance the controller's decision making and awareness. Um, so you think, okay, is it a blown fuse or something like that? And you can understand turning electrics off that would resolve the problem, hopefully, potentially, don't know. Um, again, going back to the previous question about other possibilities in this, in this a, an emergency scenario like this, you don't know if that is the only problem. And so we must be extra precautious in the way that we respond to emergency because it might not just be a radio problem, it might not just be an electrical problem. Um, we've now lost that two-way comms and if the emergency were to develop, we won't necessarily know that. So going back to the kind of initial clearance into the airspace, from an air law perspective, if all you have is a radio failure or a loss of communication, you can't enter that airspace unless you've been cleared in prior to losing comms. Mm -hmm. So with an emergency, that's much more at the pilot's discretion. Uh, but it definitely did take that questioning out of my mind. Um, and I, I would have made the same decision anyway but it would have been more, more difficult and put more, uh, it would have been just more thinking for me to do about uh, what the best kind of course of action is. So it was definitely helpful to get that clearance straight away. It's easy, I think, to sort of sit on the ground and look at this and think about what would I do. But I, I think we can all agree, as we're all pilots here. Uh, fly, I mean, I think you fly 172 occasionally, Henry, and yep. you know, I, I have as well. You know, we can all sit here and, and think, goodness, I really wouldn't want that to happen to me. I'm just wondering how you're thinking as you look at what we've just seen here, Henry. I mean, that that fire might not have stopped. I mean, that's that's the you know, that's the that's the main worry here. No, definitely. I, I, I found it quite um sort of yeah, the, the hairs were standing up on my arms really watching that, just sort of seeing Zach's reaction and sort of almost empathizing with the emotion and the sort of human element of what you're going through there. I mean yeah, I was doing exactly this a few weeks ago. I took my dad flying in a Cessna and it could have been me. Um, and it does make you wonder, what would I have done? Would I have done anything differently? 
etc cetera, etc cetera. and you're sort of almost thankful it it wasn't me but um yeah it, it is it's quite exhilarating to sort of see that and I think that's why it's, you know it's great that we're having this conversation that we can all talk about it and learn from it because if it does happen to any one of us or someone that we know it's great to share and talk about it so that we can all learn from it. Because Zach was now on radio for the final approach the team in the tower were shining a steady green light at him which means clear to land interesting to see this in use for real from the cockpit perspective. It was a fairly windy and bumpy day. Looking at the windsock, it looks like probably about a 10, 10 knot crosswind from Northern Path. Dad should have been told to put his phone down. <laughs> Mind you, you weren't thinking about that at the time, Zach. But, uh... It didn't bother me at all, no. And you're going to tell me that was your best landing ever? It was one of the best across the landings, yeah. <laughs> so, Zach, just you've had time to think about it now, and I know that you were processing this on the day that you came back as we were talking um, that evening. Um, what, what's your reflection on it now? On the day, I felt like it, it went very well. Uh, reflecting on it, the outcome was, was very good. Everyone was fine. The plane was fine. Less importantly, but, you know. Um, but there are definitely a lot of learning points. So do you want me to go through those or do you yeah, want to ask yeah, some questions yeah. about those? So the first thing that I found interesting was that I didn't think at any point to look at a checklist. So I did everything the checklist would have told me to do, except using the fire extinguisher, which I'm not sure whether it would have been effective at aiming at something behind uh, the panel, but that is what the checklist says to do. It also says to keep the windows closed until you've used the fire extinguisher. I felt like I wasn't breathing properly. And so I, that's a definitely a kind of interesting debate whether you follow the checklist, but you know, getting rid of the fire isn't gonna do much if I'm passed out. So it's, it's definitely weighing the checklist against the kind of scenario and I know you mentioned to me on the phone that I don't think you have ever tried to remove the fire extinguisher from its um, no. mounting. And I wonder how many other pilot pilots haven't tried to remove it, um, and if they could in a hurry. So I, the next time I flew was about four days later. I spent a good 10 minutes taking the fire extinguisher out and just, just kind of playing with it, getting used to the feel of it, exactly how I would remove the pin from it, that kind of thing. And I found that helpful, and I think... Although it wasn't that I was reluctant to use it, I hadn't even thought of it. But if I had thought of it, I may have been reluctant because I have never, I have never even touched it. Henry, just to wrap up, I just wondered if you had any questions um, for Zach while, while we're all here. Oh, just, I've, yeah, I'm sort of in awe of it, really. It's, it's fascinating to sort of watch. And as we've discussed before, just it's um, really quite nerve wracking to sort of see the situation unfold and I sort of really feel for Zach and what he's going through work wise work workload wise there and the stress and having his dad next to him and everything so after the incident we just sort of paused here on the video Zach and we sort of mentioned about that sort of sigh of relief you must have gone through when you you touch down on the runway and you can sort of look to your dad and have that moment of you know we've made it how thereafter once you'd vacated the runway and the fire service were in attendance with you and things what were you sort of going through at that stage and thinking about? Because it must have felt quite naked, right? Arriving at South End without any radio and just sort of rocking up. It was all very surreal. I'm not sure I was, I had really processed very much by the time we were kind of getting out of the aircraft, that kind of thing. Uh, I was definitely kind of shaky, but that's just adrenaline. Um, I'm not really sure how I was feeling because I don't think it was, I don't think it was very significant immediately after because there was just so much adrenaline kind of blocking all of that out uh I just knew what needed to happen and I didn't really although I'm sure I was scared I didn't really 
feel that above anything else. And you, you've flown since, um, what, six days afterwards, did you say? Uh, yeah, I think six. I think I said four, but it was actually six, yeah. And uh, how was that? That was great. That was one of the best flights I've had because I got, uh, got on top of some kind of scattered clouds and clouds are probably my favourite part of flying. They're just incredible. So getting on top of them and being with them was uh, was amazing. And in terms of fear or any kind of trauma from the incident, I didn't feel anything. So I think everything's going to be fine. And is dad going to come with you again? He would like to, yeah. <laughs> That's good to that was, hear. That was his first flight with me, so. <laughs> good to hear. Uh, Zach, thank you so much. Henry, thank you to you as well. Thanks. Hey, welcome. Been a pleasure. Well done to Zach for staying calm, flying the aeroplane, and then for taking the trouble to share his story with us. That's all for this episode. If you like the video, please subscribe for more general aviation adventures from the UK. Until next time, fly safely, my friends.